world is so hungry, but we hold the bread of life. Surrounded by darkness, but we know the name of the light. In a day so divided, we have the love that unites. Jesus. been broken. He's always been forever. He'll be hope, hope, hope for all nations. Hope, hope for every need. Hope, hope for the life that's been broken. He's always been forever. He'll be grace that can mend the marriage that's too far gone. The arms that are bringing the prodigal hearts back home. The truth for the lonely, that you are never alone. Jesus, Jesus, he is hope, hope, hope for all nations, hope, hope for every need, hope, hope for the life that's been broken he's always been forever he'll be the same great power that raised him from the dead is living within us the church will rise with kingdom dreams again nothing can stop us the same great power that raised him from the dead is living within us the church will rise with kingdom dreams again. Nothing can stop us. We are declaring hope, hope, hope for all nations. Hope, hope for every need. Hope, hope for the life that's been broken. He's always been, forever he'll be.
called to capture this city for Christ. Called to capture this city for Christ. Staring out the window. As the rain comes pouring down My heart soars as he rounds the bend He's always right on time He greets me with candy And a big smile on his face An angel on my doorstep In this ungodly place he drives me to Sunday school Where they teach about God's grace I learned that I'm a sinner But I don't have to die that way Cause Jesus shed His blood for me on Calvary one day When it's time to go back home I'm wishing I could stay But my Lord will protect me As I trust Him and obey For my Savior lives within me I was lost but now I'm saved I thank God that Jesus died for little kids like us In His wisdom He had planned someone who cared enough A tender heart soft spoken, gentle with His touch Thank you Lord for sending me the captain of the bus I still remember singing Jesus loves me, this I know So grateful for the peace I've found And the joy that fills my soul so if you're lost and searching, confused and all alone, the shepherd came to give you life, if only you will come. Our Father sends His servants to make His presence known. I thank God that Jesus died for little kids like us In His wisdom He had planned someone who cared enough A tender heart soft spoken, gentle with His touch Thank you Lord for sending me the captain of the bus Thank you Lord for Jesus The captain of the bus And tell you here, and then Brian's going to come up here in just a few minutes to give a testimony. But um, Brian Lehman, of course, 32 years in the bus ministry since 1988. Uh, their family has been in the bus ministry, and um, and of course, along with him, his wife was serving. Now everybody's going to watch you walk up, Shelly. Come on up. Let's all stare at her as she walks up. No. Yay. 
Behind every great man, there's a better woman. Amen? Amen. And uh, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, 32 years in the bus ministry, this family has served. Their family has, he's going to talk a little bit about that. He's been three years as our bus director. And so uh, we're glad to, to, to have the Laymans in our church, the Brian Layman family, and uh, so glad about everything that he has done. And I'm, I'm honored uh, that he would, uh, he would be such a, a blessing here at this church before I, before I came and even since I've been here. And uh, so uh, our bus captains uh, are Ben, Paul, and Randy, if you can make your way up here. Our three bus captains. It's Paul Harris, Ben Templin, and Randy Beavers. And uh, let's see here. This is, uh, come on up. Paul Harris, okay. Paul Harris is the captain for the Bern and Geneva route. And Paul has been a bus captain for two and a half years. And then uh, Ben, right here, Ben Templin. Ben has been a bus captain uh, for uh, in, in Decatur. He's our Decatur bus captain, and uh, he has been our bus captain for four years. And then uh, Randy on the end there, um, Randy uh, takes, takes them all down. He's been a long eight months um, as the bus captain. Now, we just he, Randy's one of our newest bus captains, but he runs the Bluff, Bluffton route. And let's give them a hand again. And we would be nowhere. We would be nowhere. Trust the most important part of the bus ministry. And I believe this with all my heart. Because we can't have them without you. Is our bus drivers. Amen. Amen. And so uh, Steve uh, Harris, if you could. Jimmy Bratmuller and Mark Lehman. Could you come up here? You. Somewhere up here. Just make, make, make a way there. As we said in the military, make a hole, make a hole. And uh, Mark Lehman, of course, uh, is the driver for Paul and the Burn and Geneva route. And Mark has been driving a bus here for eight years. And he had some time before, and then he's come back and uh, been, been doing that again. And so we're very grateful for Mark Lehman. Uh, Jimmy, over here on the end here, Jimmy uh, runs the route for Ben. Uh, ben is his captain. And, uh, and Jimmy's been driving our buses to Decatur for four years. And uh, we're very grateful for him. And then Steve. Right there in the middle, Steve has the longevity of the drivers. Uh, he has been driving a couple times uh, split up, but between all the years, he's been driving our buses. Right now, he's the one to Bluffton, uh, which is Randy's route, and he's been at that for 14 years driving a bus. And so let's give them another hand. Now, I'd like the bus workers, if you are a worker, not a rider yet, we haven't got you yet, but if you are a worker on the bus route and you work underneath these men, I want you to make your way up to the platform and try to squeeze in here behind me, okay? All the workers, everybody who works on the bus route, come on up. Yes, you got to come up, ladies. What a bunch of hardworking folks here. These are our bus workers. Let's give them a hand. You got everybody up here? As you can see, it takes a lot of work behind this bus ministry. This is the workforce. These are our drivers. These are our captains. Uh, these are our workers that make everything happen. And, uh, and so I honor you today. Thank you so much. Your pastor loves you very much. These people love you very much. And I know your kids and adults that you bring in love you very much. And so let's give them all a hand again. Now, if you, whether you're an adult or whether you're a child and you ride our buses in, you ride our buses in, not drive them, but ride them in. Um, can you come on up here and you fill up the rest of the space down here? All of our bus, all of our bus riders, okay? If you ride a bus in, come on. You can go down here a little bit. If you want to go in front, that's fine. If you want to stay down in front, that's fine. There's some spots over here you can fill. All of our bus riders. Y'all can, that's okay. You can just turn around right there if you want. Y'all want to come over here? There's some more room over here. A little bit of room over here if you want to come down here. So I want you to turn around so everybody can see you. All right. Now, now take a look. Ain't God good? Amen. Amen. 
I mean, God has just really blessed this church. And, uh, and we really love you. Thank you so much for riding our, thank you for trusting us. Number one, with, our, with your life, okay? <laughs> but uh, thank you for trusting us to get you to church. Thank you for coming to church. Can I encourage you right now? No matter how old you are, keep coming to church. Amen. Keep riding the bus in. These folks that have been riding the bus in that are here today can testify that the bus ministry works. And uh, it changes lives. And uh, I'd love to see many of you grow up. And if you're around this area still, I'd like to still see you come to church Amen. and be faithful. And if you have to ride the bus in, still ride the bus in. We have adults here that ride the bus in. Praise the Lord for them. And uh, we're grateful for it. Let's give them all a hand. Am I using, am I using this mic for the, this? Okay. All right. So what I want to do now is y'all stay here, okay? I have asked a couple of people. Uh, the following people to give a very short testimony of what the bus ministry means to them. And I'm going to start with uh, our bus director, Brian Lehman. And I think him and his wife are going to make their way here, if y'all can make your way up here. And he has a few words that he would like to say. Okay, Jesse. Is this okay? That one might be on. Go ahead. It's on? Okay. Uh, I had no, I loved the bus ministry from the day we started uh, back in, the, I think, 83 or 4, I can't remember the date. But I wasn't planning on getting in it. I was just cheering everybody on. This is all true. A fellow that worked for me at the time was soul winning over in Penville, which is, I, I, I Googled it, as of 2016, it had a population of 620. <laughs> it's a little country town about 22 miles from here. He came back to work that next morning. He said, there's four Four kids had just moved from our Fort Wayne bus route, and they don't have a way to get to church. I said, well, he said, let, you know, we need to get them. He said, well, let's talk to Pastor Rogers about it. We're in his office over here by the highway and saying, what are we going to do about those kids that, that need to get to church? And this is no lie. Now, this, a truck goes down the road and says, Penville Cabinet Company on the side of the truck. I bet you've never seen that all the time. Yeah. And they're not even in Penville. They're in Portland. <laughs> and we said, look, God just wrote it. <laughs> we got to get those kids to church. And so <laughs> we started riding a bus to Penville. I mean, Pastor Rogers argued, brother, <laughs> not Penville. But we started in that little town and, and the surrounding towns around there. And my wife got right in with us. We did, made it a family. It was a family thing. Remember, Zach? The whole family. Boy, God blessed it. There was times we had high bus route. Do you believe that? Penville. We, we had a little town called Nottingham. I mean, it's, I think the population was 22, but I'm not sure. But over half the people of Nottingham got saved and baptized. Can anybody, brother, can you say that about Chicago? I mean, miracles started happening. God blessed. But our family, what it did for our family is probably one of the best things we ever did. But if anyway, um, this is amazing. Zach, who's here today, about... Uh, Three weeks ago, sends an email to my company because he knows he knows the Amish country popcorn. And we have not connected for 25 years, we're thinking, right? 25 years. He gave me permission to read this. So sometimes you start wondering, is it really worth all this? I mean, does anybody really care? Does anything, does it really matter? I'm remembering back to being 15, 16 years old and working to, for Brian and spending long days in the field when it rained, working inside an Amish country popcorn. He scooped me up on a church bus route. He showed me how to get to heaven. And soon a hard day's work, I showed up, dropped off by my mom every day, 7 a.m. To, to close, to sundown. Or, thank God, our church on Thursday night. We knew we stopped for church. 
I don't work for popcorn anymore, but I still serve Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks, Brian, your brother in Christ, Zach. It's worth it. It's worth it. No way it's worth it. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, brother. Woo. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Wow. That is that is exciting. All right. Um, I have also asked. Um, let's see. I've also asked Randy, who is the bus captain for the Bluffton route. I've asked him to get a little testimony of what the bus ministry means to him. Randy. Um, first of all, I mean, I guess I was kind of like Brian, you know, just uh, didn't, didn't I, I loved bus ministry, glad we ran buses, and didn't really have a desire or anything to be a part of it. And it's way out of my comfort zone, not, you know, really a people person, kind of keep to myself. And, but I don't know, as uh, I kind of had the thought, I guess, that, or just impressed on it, and but I was like, you know, they've, they've got plenty of workers, so I'm not really going to you know, worry about it. And then Pastor, like a couple messages later, mentioned that they needed workers in the bus ministry. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, so I went and asked the Pastor if he needed any help. And he was like, yes, 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 we do. And, and so I was like, well, if you need any help, I'll help. And, and like I said, wasn't really looking forward to it. I just, I mean, I don't, I'm not good with meeting new people and, and, but God used it, and it, he, uh, it, it, it did something it, to me. I mean, just, um, I mean, I'm still shy. I'm still not good around new people, but, but um, uh, it, it just, I mean, seeing new families come, and, and, and during uh, the Cowboy Carnival, a uh, couple of riders got saved. The family got saved, and it was just, like, so awesome. I mean, and... And when they don't come, man, it tears your heart out. It, it really does. Um, and in fact, I mean, today was, we had low numbers. I don't know if it's because of the time change or what, but it, and uh, we stopped at uh, Jason's house, and I begged him. I was like, please, please come. I was like, we, we, I mean, I don't want to bring in an empty bus on bus day. And, and uh, so he's, he said he would, and, and thank the Lord he did come, and, and, and he answered it. He was an answer to prayer because we was praying. I mean, all of our workers, we, we stopped and we, we prayed and that somebody would come. And, and then somebody came. And then we get to church. I get another text from uh, Brandon here. And <laughs> he's like, hey, did the bus come by yet? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> sorry. Because <laughs> we didn't get the confirmation yesterday. So I went back to Bluffton and picked him up. And I'm just so thankful that he came, him, and, him and his kids. And, I'm thankful to be here. And it's, just, it's, it's so awesome. I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm glad you texted me. Yeah, man. But it, it's been amazing, and, and I love it. It has changed my life, and thankful that I'm a part of it. I've asked now a driver, uh, Jimmy, who's been driving to the Cater route for four years, uh, to say a little bit about the driving aspect of it, but what a blessing the bus ministry has been for him. Um, I never grew up, uh, with the bus ministry and, uh, my church didn't know much about it. I, I even used to think it was a little weird. I, I hate to admit it, but that's what I thought at the time. And, uh, since I started driving, just the, uh, connections I've had with all the people, all the riders, 
uh, especially the kids, just uh, in the afternoon, hopping on the bus, uh, so excited about what they learned in Sunday school, uh, telling me all about it, and then I'd play along, act like I had no idea what they're talking about. I was like, oh, there's no way Jonah got swallowed by the whale. <laughs> they're like, yeah, yeah, and they tell me the rest of the story. And just think if... Uh, if I didn't wake up early that morning, if I wasn't willing to drive that bus, they might have never heard that story. Yeah. They might never have learned about Jesus. And yeah. I just, it's, uh, driving the bus has become a duty that I've really, uh, really come to cherish. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. That's one of our adult bus riders. Uh, to ride the bus in and what the bus ministry means to Mrs. Mary. So I was asked to say a few words about what the bus ministry means to me. I was excited to do so, but though I am used to speaking to crowds, those in my crowds happen to be five or six years old. So <laughs> I'm going to, um, I'm going to tell this uh, the best way I know how, with a story. Once there was a four to five year old girl who came from a broken home. In this home was a hardworking mama and an alcoholic father and lots of confusion and very scary times. One day, this little girl sister, she got an opportunity to go to church and um, so did this little girl because that church happened to have a bus ministry. Um, because of this bus ministry, this little girl having the opportunity to attend church on a regular basis, this little girl learned about God, learned about Jesus, learned about love and about salvation, and even prayed to be saved through an invitation in Sunday school. Over the years, this girl grew in her faith. She learned more, got baptized, taught Sunday school, went on mission trips, and prayed a lot. Um, fast forward to her adulthood, this little girl, now a, a woman, she fell in love, married, and had children of her own. Um, now her mission was to instill the love of God to her wee ones so that they too would grow in a relationship with the God she so loved. Every story has its trials, and, um, and a villain. I am sure that Satan wanted to, th wanted to throw in some wrenches to turn the story around. You see, this girl developed an eye disease that makes everyday tasks quite a challenge. First, it caused um, night blindness and a lack of depth perception. It affects the way that she sees details and color contrast, and now, due to the lack of peripheral vision, it has rendered her legally blind with an increasing opportunity for it to become permanent blindness. Um, she had to give up her license um, for fear that she would be too unsafe to be on the road. So though this girl was unsettled, fearful, and even fragile, God still provided ways for the girl to carry on, and she took all of this in, so grateful for that provision. Then the girl's husband developed a heart condition, caught just in time, Thank the Lord. The heart condition weakened his heart. Now being weakened and being on so many medicines that also caused him to be daily just drowsy and uh, lethargic. Um, and having multiple jobs, um, this put a halt to the girl and her family's church exposure. The girl, unable to drive and the husband so tired, the girl prayed for a way to be able to attend church again. This weighed heavy on her heart. After praying for this yet again one morning, two beautiful ladies knocked on her door. The ladies invited the girl to church. The girl explained that she would love to attend with her family. However, the circumstances prevented them from attending. With a pleasant smile, Miss Marcy Marsh said, well, we have a bus ministry. You see, for me and my family, the bus ministry allows us to gather with a church body regularly. It offers me a chance to grow, to learn, to worship, and be in the house of God with other believers. It gives my children the opportunity to see other godly examples and to imitate those examples. 
my boys have already stated throughout the course of this year that they prayed a prayer to be saved in their son throughout the course of this year, and they've been talking to me about baptism. Um, and then um, they have been memorizing scripture and applying lessons learned to everyday life. It's in our discussions all the time. My little girl is learning lessons about showing love and kindness, not just through me telling her this is how we need to be, but through her Sunday school lessons as well. It increases our discussions, strengthens our prayer life, and overall blesses our lives. We are so thankful for the bus ministry that this church has provided. Without it, we would not, meet, would not have met so many amazing, loving, caring, wonderful family of believers here at Faith Baptist Church. Where's, where's Josh? Josh, here you go. Why don't you stand up here so people can see you? This is one of our bus kids, Josh, very faithful, and uh, he wants to say a few words about the bus ministry means to him. <laughs> um, okay, so to me, I think we should have the bus ministry because it's an awesome place. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> how I first got on there was during your vacation Bible school, yeah. the two-day thing, and then so Paul came, whoever Paul is, <clears throat> Paul came and with his friend, and he was like, well, do you want to come? And I was like, well, I would, but my mom's working. And he's like, well, we have a bus. <laughs> and then so they picked me up, and then they took me there. And then we went again the second day. And then um, we started going every Sunday after that, and eventually on Thursdays with Miss Krista. And so my sister told me to say, I like the bus ministry because it gives us snacks. <laughs> and I, <laughs> that's not the only reason, but I do like that the bus ministry does give us snacks because nobody has time to make pancakes at 8 o'clock in the morning before you go to church, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Pop-tarts can do. <laughs> so um, being on the bus ministry is a very good thing. There's so many good people, the Harrises, Anthony, Abe, people on other buses, <laughs> like Miss Krista, um, other people, Addie, <laughs> and, and other people, I'm sure. And there's just so many wonderful people on the bus ministry. And it's not just a route of transportation. It's a, it's a way of life that you can really get to know. Praise the Lord that the bus ministry is alive and well here. And uh, thank the Lord for that because uh, it is a, it's a time-consuming, sacrificial ministry. But it's worth it. Is it not just to hear these stories, to see this right here? And, uh, and praise the Lord for them. So what we're going to do now at this time, we're going to dismiss you kids and adults to so go ahead and, and we're going to shake hands with one another, okay? Try to be careful not to bump into each other too much today. There's a lot of people in here, uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's greet one another and y'all can have a seat.
about what he has done. I start counting my blessings one by one. I do not deserve all that he's done for me, but I'll praise him forever through eternity. And I am amazed that he'd take the time to give me such blessings and fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. He's given me breath and he's given me life. He has saved my lost soul from torment and strife. Christ died on the cross just to show me his love. He is building a home up in heaven above. And I am amazed that he take the time to give me such blessings and fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. As I journey this way, but his mercies are new every day. His grace is sufficient forever we trow. He amazes me more and more every mile. He gave me his word in this precious old book. It speaks to my heart every time that I look. He loves me and helps me when tempted to sin. Through Christ my Lord, over Satan I win. And I am amazed that he take the time to give me such blessings and fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am amazed that he take the time to give me such blessings and fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. special. It was great, and uh, boy, my heart is full. It's been a great service this morning, and the testimonies, and boy, it's just, uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, now that clock says 1040, so I don't know what time you normally get out, but it uh, sounds like we got a long time to go. <laughs> no, I'm not a long preacher, so you'll be happy about that. Uh, I don't preach more than two hours on a Sunday, but... Uh, <laughs> But it's really good to be here, and I don't know who said it, but uh, I think pa Brother Lehman may have said this, that, uh, that it is worth it. Maybe, maybe Pastor Mark said this, that the bus ministry is worth it, and uh, it's a lot of work. You know, there, it's a lot of sacrifice, and uh, by the way, everybody has a part in the bus ministry. You may not be a worker. You may not be a driver. You may not be a bus captain, but you can pray. You can pray for the bus workers. You can pray for the bus riders. Uh, you can give. Uh, of course, you know, the, the fuel is not free <laughs> in these buses. It costs money to run buses, and, and uh, you can give to that, to the ministry, and, and, uh, and, and give to that. But it is worth it. It is worth it. And there's just so many, uh, not long ago, matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago, Lacey was there at college. I asked, I asked all the students if they would write down for me, if they, if they were reached by the bus ministry. And not just First Baptist, we have a good number of students there that were reached through the Chicago bus routes. But I, I was just kind of curious. I wanted to know how many of our students at our Bible college were reached through their bus ministry at home or their parents were reached with the bus ministry. And I was overwhelmed. I, I, I haven't had a chance to go through all the, all the uh, papers there, but I've got a stack of papers in my office of, of Bible college students that, uh, that were reached through the bus ministry or 
their parents were reached for the bus ministry, and now they're in Bible college training for the ministry, and, and these young people, they, they're training to be pastors and missionaries, and, and they're going to serve God all around the world as a result of a bus worker, a bus captain, a bus driver, and uh, just someone who, who cared, and uh, boy, it's just uh, it's just amazing, amazing thing. Uh, my daughter, not long ago, called AT&T customer service. Now, if you've ever called a, you know, an AT&T customer service, you know, number one, you're going to be on hold for a while, but, but, uh, but you have no idea who, who is answering the phone. You don't know what state they live in. Sometimes you don't know what country they're li- they live in, but uh, she got a young lady who answered the phone and uh, lives in a distant state, somewhere in, in, somewhere in America here, and, uh, and they, so the customer service lady asked my daughter for her address so she could look up her account, and she said, you know, we live this such and such street, Hammond, Indiana, and the customer service said, lady said, Hammond, Hammond, is that the church that runs the buses to Chicago? And uh, she said, yeah, it happens to be that where I attend. She said, I attend church there. And, and, uh, and that customer service lady said, when my brother and I were, were little, we used to ride the buses to that church. And, and it's stories like that that are just, just it's unbelievable, just around the world that, that people are being impacted and influenced. And, uh, and those of you that have a part, I hope you're encouraged today. I hope you're encouraged to keep going. Uh, I hope that others would consider uh, being involved and having a, some part in it. But uh, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Take your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I uh, just want to look at a few verses here and we'll make some application from the scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Brother Marsh, thank you so much for asking us to come and uh, in the accommodations and the, the, the house over there is, is, uh, is such a nice place. Thank you for your hospitality and, and uh, thank you for all you've done. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to begin reading in verse number 8. And I'm going to read uh, down to verse number 12. I'm actually going to leave your Bibles open there. We're going to look at several other verses here in this uh, chapter. But 2 Corinthians... Chapter number four, I'll begin reading in verse number eight. You can follow along as I read. The Bible says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So, de- so then death worketh in us, but life in you. And I want to pray and then get right into the message this morning. Father, thank you for what we've heard this morning, what we've seen with our eyes, what we have felt in our heart. And Lord, we know that it's all because of you. It's because of what you have done in our lives. And uh, Father, we are so grateful for your love to us. Thank you for how you have blessed this church, how you have blessed this ministry, and and God, we pray you would continue to do that. And Lord, for the next few minutes, as we look at some scripture, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray you'd give us exactly what we need today. And uh, Lord, a lot of needs in this room. And Father, you know the hearts, and you know the lives, and I pray that, that something would be said today that would be a help that would be an encouragement, that would, uh, that would just be exactly what we need today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The Apostle Paul, we know as, as students of the, of the Bible, that, that he, is, he was no stranger to persecution. Uh, Paul went through a lot of difficult times in his life. And I just want you to just real quickly turn back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, turn over there to verse 23, and it just gives us a, just a brief, uh, just some brief verses there about some of the things that he went through. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. 
I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeying, journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. When we read the account of Paul, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to, to see all that he went through, all the trials and the afflictions. You know, sometimes we, we go through things and, and, uh, and it's so easy for it, to, for it to discourage us. But you think about the Apostle Paul and all that he went through. And, and he's writing this, this scripture here, and of course, by the inspiration of God, to the Corinthian people to help them get through difficult times. Because the Apostle Paul knew how to get through difficult times. And he knew that we would be in a place like this, and we would be here in 2020, and the same thing would be true about us, that we would experience difficulty in our life. And every one of us could testify of maybe it's a trial that you have just gone through and, and you could give testimony of, of, of what you've experienced in your lifetime. Perhaps it's something now you're going through and you're seeking the Lord for answers and guidance and, and just a hardship of life. Or perhaps it might be something you'll face someday. You see, we don't know what will take place tomorrow. We don't know what's in store for our life. But we do know this. We have a God who loves us and a God who cares for us and a God who wants to help us get through difficult times. Difficulty comes in uh, into the life of every believer. Sometimes it's financial. And uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's the ebb and flow of, of just, just dealing with financial pressure. You know, if, uh, if, you, you know, if you watch the stock market, boy, it's really plunged the last uh, couple of weeks there. And, and, and you know, the finances, are, it's, it's, it's up and it's down. And, and, uh, and sometimes there's pressure that comes into our life because we're just trying to make ends meet and try to pay the bills and try to feed the kids and try to keep everything, uh, everything good there. And that can create a lot of pressure, a lot of tension. Sometimes it's health issues. And uh, boy, thank God, if you've got good health, thank God for that. Amen. But you know, health can be such a trial. And, and uh, my, my father, who went to be with the Lord a few years ago, died of lung cancer. And boy, those last few years of his life were very challenging. And uh, my wife's family, her parents, are going through some, some, just some tough things physical health issues that are very challenging and very trying and and uh, and, and, and and that's the way it, it can be sometimes sometimes it's it's family relationship issues sometimes it's time management issues just trying to figure out how to get it all done and uh, and, and and every one of us could 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 share uh, perhaps some pressure in your life or some some trial in your life or some things that you're going through and you know the question is this how can we as a christian maintain stability through the difficulties of life i don't know about you but i i don't want to be on a roller coaster I don't want to be up one week and down the next and up one month and down the next month and, and be unstable. I want to find stability in my Christian life as we go through the difficulties of life, as we go through the trials of life. I want to find stability. What, keep, what will keep us from sinking or fainting or cracking under the pressure? And it's very sad to me. I, I, I know some who go through difficult times. Some who go through some of the things I mentioned, whether it be financial or maybe it's a health issue or just a, just, just a trying maybe with their job or maybe with, with family, with children, with parents, and things are trying. And you know, it's very sad to me, instead of running to God, they seem to run away from God. 
And the answer really is found in the Word of God. It's not found away from the Word of God. And we need to find our stability in, in God's Word and not something else. The question I want, I want to answer this morning is how can we maintain stability? How can we be, be steadfast? How can we be unmovable? In a day when so many quit. In a day when so many fall by the wayside. And by the way, these bus kids that come on your buses and these young people that attend this church and the teenagers that are here that, that, that are represented by the families that come, they need, they need us to ex be an example to them of somebody that has found stability in our Christian life. And we don't crack because we go through hard times. And we don't quit on church. We don't quit on God because we go through a little hardship in our life. We need to find stability. But how can I find that? As a Christian, how do I find stability in this, in, in, a, in, a, in, in this world that is changing constantly? How can I find stability? And I want to give you just a few things this morning that I believe you'll find in God's Word that could be a help to you. First of all, let me say this. We must have faith in God. Amen. We must have faith in God. Look, at, look with me if you have your Bibles Open there, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and look at verse number 13. The Bible says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I, I, have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Hebrews eleven six says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. You know, God wants us to have faith, but we can't please him without faith. But what is faith? You know, faith, simply put, is believing that God is who he says he is. Amen. And that's what the, the verse says in Hebrews eleven six 6, that, we must, that, that he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And I don't know about you, but I believe, I believe in God. And we live in a world that, that, that has gone crazy on this thing about not believing in God. You know, these atheists that say that they don't believe in God, well, God doesn't believe in them either. But we need a, we need a, a generation of Christians who say, you know what, I believe, I believe who God says he is. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Spirit is my helper. God gave me the Word of God. He's the author of Scripture. He's the author of the Word of God. And I believe it. Amen. I believe it. And we need a generation of, of Christians who just believe that God is who he says he is. Amen. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. You say, but, but why does God allow trouble into my life? Why does God allow this to take place or this to happen? Look, have faith in God. Trust God that he's in control, that he knows what he's doing. A faith that says no matter what God allows in my life, I am going to trust in him. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you have faith in God? Do you have faith in God? You know, faith is more than just saying, I believe in God. But faith needs to be expressed. We need to express our faith in God. And how do we do that? How do we show God? And by the way, what's important to me as a Christian is that God believes or God knows that I believe in him, not that you know I believe in him. Now, I, I, I want to be an example, and I want you to know I believe in him, but it's more important to me that God knows than that, than that you know. But how do I express my faith? Well, a number of ways we can express our faith. We express our faith by reading the Bible. You know, the simple act of just reading your Bible is an expression of your faith. Now, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I would imagine you're a little bit like me. You don't understand everything you, you read. I certainly don't. But you know, every time I sit and I read my Bible, it's an expression of my faith to God. What I'm saying to God is, I believe in you. And I want God to know I believe in him. And just, just by reading my Bible, 
Just having a daily time of reading the word of God is an, is an expression of my faith. And I'm saying to God, without even saying it, I don't have to tell God I believe in him. I, just, I need to read my Bible. Because by reading my Bible, it's an expression of my faith. How else do I express my faith? I express my faith by prayer. I don't understand everything about prayer. I know we're commanded to pray. The disciples went to Christ and they said, teach us to pray. Not, he, they didn't say, teach us how to pray. They said, you know, we just need to pray. We, we just need to, to be taught to pray. And every Christian ought to pray. But, you know, I don't understand exactly how prayer works. You've got some missionary letters out there uh, that you support. And, and we ought to pray for those missionaries. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know exactly how my prayer to that missionary works. I pray that God will bless the missionaries on that, on the, on the, in the hallway there. I've got a, a young man who many years ago I knocked on his door. He was 15 years old when I met him. And uh, he was watching um, fake wrestling on TV. He was eat, I'll never forget, he was eating a bowl of Cheerios and he's watching this fake wrestling on TV and he was getting into it. And I said, hey, I said, I'm Brother John from the church. What's your name? He said, my name's Osmond. I said, hey, I've got a bus that comes by your house. We're up in the north side of Chicago. I said, why don't you come ride the bus with me? And uh, he goes, nah. He goes, you know, I'm a little too old for that. He said, I'm really not interested. And I said, come on. I said, why don't you just come and just come one time? That's a key, 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 uh, key, qu- key words, you know, for a key phrase for a bus worker. Just come one time. I'll never bother you again. You know, <laughs> but just come one time. Just ride the bus one time. And finally, he said, he said, you know what? He said, okay, I'll ride. He came to church that next day, and, uh, and then he started coming faithfully. And then he got saved. He got baptized. I took him to youth conference one couple of years later. We had, we, we had a big youth conference at our church. I took him to youth conference, and after, con- after the conference, he came to me, and he said, Brother John, he said, he said during, the, during the invitation, he said, God's called me to preach. And he said, God wants me to be a missionary. He's from Honduras. He said, he, he said, God's called me to be a missionary. I want to go back to my people. I want to go back and start a church in my home, my home, my home country. And, uh, you know, that's been many years ago. He's been in Honduras for 15 years Amen. serving as a missionary there with his wife. He called me last week. He said, uh, he said, well, John, he said, my son, my son Juan, who's actually named after me. <laughs> he said, my son, he said, Juan's going to come to Bible college this year. And he had some questions about asking him to come, about coming to Bible college in the fall. And, uh, and I pray for them, and we ought to pray for our missionaries. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know exactly how my prayers to God helps the missionary. I mean, we pray, but how do we know exactly how that works? But, you know, that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to pray. But, you know, more importantly, my prayer life is an expression of my faith that says to God, I believe in you. You know, people who believe in God pray. People who believe in God pray. And and my faith in God needs to be expressed through my prayer life. How else do I express my faith? I express faith by by giving. I obey God in the tithes. I give offering. And I don't know exactly what God does and how God uses it. I know in a church like this, you can see evidence. You've got lights. You've got, you've got buses that run. And, and, uh, and, and, but that's an expression of my faith. And I give because I believe in God. I don't give because, because my pastor wants me to give. I give because God commands me to give. And I give because I want God to know I believe in him. How else can we express our faith? We express our faith by going soul winning, by telling people about Jesus. It's not my job to, uh, I, you know, we don't, we don't save anybody. Jesus does the saving, but where to do the going? And where, the, where, where to be the, be the testimony, where, where to share the gospel, where to give out tracts when we can. But, you know, that is a great expression of our faith in God. And every time we go out and we pass out a tract, we're not just helping that person know the gospel, but we're saying to God, Lord, I want you to know I believe in you. And that's why I'm willing to share the gospel and share that my testimony of telling someone else how to be saved. How can I maintain stability and, and steadfastness through difficult times? Number one, have faith in God. Number two, realize that our life's purpose is to bring glory to God. 
Look at verse number 15 of that same chapter, chapter number 4, verse 15. The Bible says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, uh, uh, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. 1 um, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, Wherefore, whether ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Ephesians chapter 43 Verse 7, listen, it says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. You know, life is not about our glory. It's about his glory. And you were put on this earth. God created you and God saved you to bring glory to God. It's not about me. And it's not about you. You know, sometimes our problems cause us to be very self-focused. And it, all, it becomes all about me. You go through a hard time, you go through a difficult, difficult time, and, and, it, and it becomes about me. When I'm sick, it's all about me. When I'm going through a trial, it's all about me. And sometimes we fail to realize that sometimes God brings trials in our life to help us to realize that, hey, it's not about you, it's about him. It's about God. And God wants our life, he wants us to bring glory to him. Many years ago, my, my sister called me about, I think, it's been, I think it's been eight years now, but she called me on an early Saturday morning, and, and uh, it's about 5.30 in the morning. I remember I was getting ready to leave my house to go to the college to conduct some bus meetings, and and she said, uh, she said, we've got terrible news. She said, uh, she said our, our son, our oldest son, Tyler, was killed in a car accident last night. He was 17 years old. He was the same age as our daughter. And, uh, and it was just a tragic, tragic thing. And uh, that Monday, my family and I, my wife and my kids, we flew out. They lived in California at that time. And we flew out to California to be part of the, the funeral and to be a comfort and a help to them. And that was an amazing thing, Brother Marsh. Um, of course, you know my brother-in-law, and uh, we were in the church there, and, and there were thousands of people that came. It was a large, large church there in Long Beach, but, um, but my, my nephew was in the, in the casket at the foot of the pulpit, and my brother-in-law sang a solo. If you can imagine this, but he sang a solo at his own son's funeral, and the song he sang was, Even in the Valley, God is Good. And you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why he did that, because he didn't want... He didn't want it to be about him. Sure, he grieved, and, and they grieved, and it was a hard, hard time, but he wanted God to get the glory. He wanted the people to know that even during their difficult time of their life, even in the valley, God is good. God is good. And you know, when God brings difficulty into to our lives, we need to ask ourselves the question, how can God use this in my life to bring glory to him? How can God bring, how, well, how, how has God brought this event, this trial, this trouble into my life, this difficulty in my life? How can it be used to bring glory to God? Because that is why we were created. You know, with a, with a perspective like that, it gives me more stability in my Christian life. You know, with a perspective like that, it helps me be a little bit more stable. And, and, and a little bit better, better understanding of God and, and why God does things and, and why God brings things into my life. Because it's not about me, it's about him. And everything that we go through, we want to make it about the Lord. The third thing I want you to notice here is, uh, is how, in the question again, how can I find stability in, the, in my Christian life? And the third thing I want to say is, is we need to daily renew our spirit daily renew our spirit look at verse number 16 the same chapter 4 verse 16 it says for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day every day we need to renew our spirit because it's true that verse is true our outward the outward spirit of our life it 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 it, it the, the world wears on us. And trials and troubles and difficulties, it wears on us. 
And we need to renew our spirit every day. And we renew our spirit through the word of God. You know, that's why church is important. I hope, I hope your spirit is renewed by being in church today. But, you know, the truth is our spirit needs to be renewed tomorrow. And it needs to be renewed on Tuesday and then again on Wednesday. And my spirit needs to be renewed on Thursday and then again on Friday. And every day I need to renew my spirit. We may suffer because of what is coming at us. But if we're spirit-filled, we can still have the right spirit. But the inward man has to be renewed day by day. You know, problems don't have to cause us to be grumpy or rude or unkind if we'll renew our spirit. Every day we take time in the word of God. Every day we take time in prayer and meditate. We can renew our spirit. We can, have a, have a, we can be spirit filled, which will help us get through difficult times of our life. How else can I find stability? And I'll end with this. The fourth thing I want to say is that we need to focus on that which has eternal value. Focus on that which has eternal value. Look at, look at the verses 17 and 18. And if, you're, if you underline things in your Bible, this would be a great, these are great verses to underline. Chapter 4, verse 17 it says here, for our light affliction is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, which we tend to do, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Aren't those great verses? You know, God is teaching us there that, you know, it's kind of interesting to me that he calls our affliction light, almost insulting that God would actually call my affliction light because to me, my affliction is heavy. It's not light. But God, but God says it's light affliction. You know why? Because it's only for a moment. It's just for a moment. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. Our lives compared to eternity is but a moment. And the problems we face, just a speck of time. People spend their lives accumulating stuff it is said that one in ten families have so much stuff they have to rent a, a some sort of storage place to keep their stuff because they have so much of it they say that there's more money generated through the in the storage industry than the than than the music industry the entire music industry combined they say there's more money generated in the, in the storage business, the industry, than there is in the music industry. And the reason I know that's true is because I read it on the Internet. <laughs> Whether we agree with that, that statistic or not, I think we would all agree that we just have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff. And you know what's going to happen to that stuff? It's all going to burn. It all goes away. It, it, it's going to rust out. It's going, to, it's going to wear out. It's going to wind up at our next garage sale. And then eventually it's going to burn. It's going to be no more. And think about how much energy, how much time, how much of our life is given to stuff. And all that stuff is temporal. You're not going to live in your house forever. You're not going to drive that car forever. Those clothes, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna wear away. And yet we give so much of our life to things that are temporal. And you know what God wants us to do? He wants us to focus on, on that which has eternal value. Things that'll, that'll last forever. What, what lasts forever? What lasts forever is what you do for Jesus. That lasts forever. It's giving out a tract. It's soul winning. It's telling somebody about Jesus. It's driving a Sunday school bus. It's teaching Sunday school. 
It's your money that you give to the ministry. It's the money you give to the local church. It's the money you give to missionaries so that the gospel can, can go around the world. So you have a part in souls being saved around the world because of the money that you gave to a missionary. You know, a good reason to get involved in the bus ministry is because it has eternal value. It was about a week ago, we got a call on a Sunday afternoon that one of our young men uh, was shot and killed in the middle of the day. And it was a, it was a, it was a gang-affiliated, gang-involved uh, attack. The boy was 15 years old, and he was shot and killed. They asked me to do the funeral for him, and, and it was tough. It was, a, it was a very, very difficult funeral. There was probably 400 people in the auditorium, and, uh, and it, was a, it was a hard funeral to conduct. But I asked the bus captain, I said, I said, tell me about that young man. I said, do you know if he got saved? And uh, he said, Brother John, he said, we have a decision slip. When he was eight years old, he church and he got saved. And that young man is living in heaven forever. Amen. He'll live in heaven forever. Yes. All because of a soul winner. All because of a bus worker. All because of, of, a, of, a, of a church member who gave, who prayed. That has eternal value. Yes. And what we do for Jesus has eternal value. It's going to last forever. We will not regret doing too much for God. We will not regret doing too much for God. When we get to heaven and we see Jesus, we'll not wish we did less. We'll wish we did more. We all have burdens. We all have heartaches. We all have things in our life we wish weren't there. They're, they're heavy. They're, they're burdens. And you know, the best thing to do with your burdens is to give them to the Lord so that you can help somebody else. You know, it's awfully hard. I, I've, I've told our bus workers many times that it's awfully hard to go to your bus route to be a help to somebody else when you're carrying your own burdens. But you know, you've got a God who loves you, and you can go to the Lord and say, Lord, here's all the, the burdens, and here's all the things I just don't have answers for, but I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it with you, because I've got people I need to go help. I've got people that need me, and I've got souls I need to win, and I've got people to love and care about and encourage. And see, that's an understanding that, that there's eternal value to what we do for the Lord. 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And that's how all of us should want to end our life, having fought a good fight, having finished our course, having kept the faith. How are we going to do that? How are we going to find stability in this Christian life? Just real quickly, number one, have faith in God. Have faith in God. The second thing I said was this, realize that it's not about our glory. It's not about us. It's about God's glory. The third thing I said is every day we need to renew our spirit. Every day we need to take time in the word of God to have God renew our spirit. And then the last thing is we need to focus on that which has eternal value and not be so consumed with the temporal. Think about eternity. Life is so short. I saw an illustration. A man took a rope. It was a, it was a long, long rope and at the end of the rope that he held in his hand was a little, he took a little red marker and he just marked off about an inch of that red, of, of that rope. And he said, you know, he said, this is our life. Just a little bit. He said, but that's eternity. And he had a long, long, just, just a long rope just as an illustration. And you know, when you think about how long we're going to live forever compared to the life that we live on earth, our time is short. Our time is so short. And, and to find stability in our, in our life through difficult times is to value eternity and not put value on, on that which is temporal. 
By the way, if you're here this morning and, and you're not sure if you died today that you'd go to heaven, that you ought to settle that today. You ought to settle that today. And by the way, all of us who are saved, there was a time in our life when we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know how to be saved. We didn't know how to be a Christian. But someone took the Bible and showed us from the word of God how to be saved, and we're grateful for that. And if you're here this morning and you cannot point to a day or a time in your life when you trusted Christ as your Savior, why don't you decide this morning to accept Christ? Accept him in your heart and know that you're going to heaven when you die. If you're a Christian here this morning, let me encourage you to find stability in your Christian life. Let me encourage you to get off the roller coaster and the anxiety and the up and down and find stability and find it in God. Find it in the word of God. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Pastor Marsh, why don't you come?